Okay, in the lab bench here, I've got some step-down transformers. I've got five of them. Looking at the core loss, most of these you can have the inputs either be 240 or 480. On these, these are all outdoor type 3Rs. This is a control transformer for an old machine. It has an input of 208, 220, 240. It has an output of 115. Anyways, here, this first one here is a 9T51Bs and Boy 008. It's a half a kVA. It's 500 volt amperes. It's, uh, it's a 60 hertz unit, class 180, 16 pounds. I've got it wired to 240 comes in and 120 comes out. And on this particular unit here, it's a General Electric. Got a core loss of 19.6 watts, and the amperes just to run it at idle is 0.56. So you got 138 volt amperes um, at no load. And the square D over here is a 1S 1F unit, 60 hertz, and it's a um, 1 kVA, 1,000 volts amperes and I've got wired so 240 comes in and 120 comes out and with it over here it's only 22.6 watts to run it at no load and the current is actually 0.24 amps so it's 59 volt amperes so it's amazing here this little guy here is 138 volt amperes this is 59 so this may have better, a little bit better steel in it. It's a little bit bigger transformer. Who knows? And then this little guy here is an Acme. T is in Tom 253008S. And I've got wired, so the input is 240. The output's 120. And this is a 50-60 hertz model, so it's got a little bit more steel in it. The wiring diagram is kind of inside here, which is kind of neat. You've got X's and H's the way you wire this up. Inputs are generally H's. Outputs are X's. So you can hook this up either 240 or 480 input or have the output 120. 240 or 120 240 if you use the center tab. Anyways, on this little guy here, it's a 50 60 hertz model, 0.5 kVA, and it's got 16 and a half watts input, uh, no load, 22 volt amperes. So if I compare it with the General Electric model over here, got the same rating of 500. This guy here is 0.52. General Electric's got to have 138 volt amperes at no load. The Acme's only 22. And because this is a 50 60 hertz model, it's got more steel in it, and so it's nowhere near the saturation because you could use this theoretically at 240 volts and uh, 50 hertz, which you need more steel. So this one's running at a lower operating point. This one's driving a little bit harder. So you got 138 there versus 22 volt amperes. Now this big guy here is a square D that is a 2S1F, 2 kVA, 60 hertz only. You can have it for 240 or 480 in output 240 or 120. I was using this 240 in, 120 out. There's a nameplate on how to wire it up. Usually they have a little box here you can cover this off. You get these used sometimes they won't have the cover. That's something you want to pay a little bit extra for. Here I've got the cover off. I usually put the screw in here so I don't lose it. Um, this particular model here, 60 hertz only. No load loss is a lot, 53.2 watts. No load amps is 1.09. So it's two whopping 268 volt amperes just to plug the thing in the wall with no load. 
Last but not least, I've got this Acme electric transformer. Uh, this came off old Blue Line machines, a T's and Tom 78440. These were used where you have an input uh, for a unit that's used around the world, it could be either 0, 208, like for three phase, one leg, 220, like for Europe, or 240. Uh, this is a 50, 60 hertz unit model, so this unit was used in a machine shipped all over around the world. Um, here's 0 and 115 volt taps, then it's got a center tap around 12 volts, so it's 24 total, then it has a plus or minus uh, 33 and a 36. A six plus or minus 33 volts or 30 30 volts so it's got 60 so on that one it's got the rating on there is 1.1 kVA but that's the sum of all the different taps so it's seven and a half amps at 120 which is 900 volt amperes 4.2 amps at 24.2 it's 102 volt amperes 2.1 at 66 volts, 139. Sum all those together, you get 1141 volt amperes, and that's exactly what, real close to what the nameplate is. On this particular one here, it's got 25.5 uh, watts input, no load. The current's only 0.11 amps, so it only takes 27 volt amperes to run. This guy, when you plug it in over and over again, if it starts up right on the start of a phase, it'll go boom because it's not potted. Uh, maybe the laminations are a little bit loose. So it's a nice transformer, 50, 60 hertz, but it will probably every six to ten times you start it will kind of make a, you know, kind of a big thud boom when it starts. Because you're starting on the uh, where the highest current is. These guys that are potted don't tend to do that because they've got some potting material in there, so they don't have some looseness. It can also be caught how the way it was wired up for the saturation. Um, here's what's interesting: I took the no load loss in watts and derived it by divided by the kVA, and so. This one's 39.2 watts core loss per kVA. This one here is 22.2 on the square D 1 kVA unit. The 2 kVA, 53.2 watts, but it's a 2 kVA unit, so it's 26.6. So it's in about the same range. The Acme one, um, 33 watts. Per kVA, that's this little guy here, and then this Acme one. I use the not point nine rating here, uh, like I'm using on 120, 115 volts, and it's about 28 watts per kVA. So they're all kind of in the same range. This one here has got the highest, the General Electric, and it also had the highest uh, volt amperes, um, probably per kilowatt, if you want to look at that. This guy's got a lot here too, but this is a two kilowatt, two kVA unit. This is uh, only a half. So this one's got a lot of uh, volt amperes for the size. So if you hook this up to something else, you're going to measure some amps, and they're all out of phase because it's a big inductor. But I'm using these as some step down transformers. I bought some used off the eBay. And I had some surplus from some other projects, so I was going through and just testing them all out, see how they run. And I've got a meter over here on the input. Also on these units, which is not apparent, the voltage that comes out when it's wired for 240 um, and then 120, it's actually on the high side on some of these. This little guy here running right now, the General Electric one here, with a 247 volt input, that's what's going on in this building now, comes out 131 volts, so it's kind of pumping it pretty hard. A lot of times it specifies these outputs to be at the full load, so it's got some reserve, but if you've only got, like, say, 150 watts through it right now, 
uh, it's kind of hitting a little bit hard, 100, 130 volts. This is 131 at no load. The square D, one kilowatt unit here. One kVA, I mean, was 129 volts. Square D, two one, two kVA unit here. It was 129. The Acme one was 130. And then this control transformer was pretty much 121 volts. And that's because it's actually marked 115 down here. It's got a 0 and 115. It's funny how they label, but they list at 120. So this actual unit here actually puts closer to 120 volts than the other ones. And these are what you call dry transformers. There's no liquid in them. Um, these are 3R that you can use outdoors. Generally, almost all these I've ever bought have been in fairly decent shape. They vary widely in price. Like this little guy I got from somebody in Indianapolis. It was only 23 bucks with freight. And then you'll find the same number like this one here. Somebody may want... 250 300 bucks for it another person wants 58 bucks they kind of vary radically all over the place in the price and some people use them to hook up um, 240 volts to drop down to 120 so you've got some clean power for computers and that's what I'm kind of doing right now so I'm just testing all these out to see what's going on this is a surplus one because it's got a connection on it and this one here is kind of got a lot of fading here in the label the Acme that one's an Acme and the General Electric ones here I think they vary this last digit for the size and these are generally arrayed come in a quarter of a KVA and then a half and then there's a one like this is a one in size and then there's generally a two, and there may be a three or four before you get some really big ones. And there's a rainproof enclosure. There's a serial number on it. Field clearance top and side, six inches minimum. That's for cooling. You don't want to have these things in a hot environment where you've got... Uh, you know something close on here and that'll add to the heat to it so they need to have um, some space around them because they will get hot but it takes a while so you, if you plug one of these in and leave it running for a long time like this one's got right now got a load of 90 watts here right there 90 watts and it may take the time constant of this might be might be a couple hours for this to get fully warm. The freight varies a lot on these things because you've got basically you're buying a big <coughs> big rock. There's 16 pounds in this one. And uh, I don't know if they say the weight on this. Here they give the percent impedance. This one weighs 15 pounds. This one weighs 16 pounds. What's it say here? Labels kind of get worn on these things. There's also the temperature rise. There's insulation class 180. Insulation class 180. There's a 100 C rise. Rated for a 40 degree ambient. So in conclusion here, the ones that are 50, 60 hertz seem to be uh, a little bit more efficient. Got a little bit more headroom. I prefer to get a 50, 60 hertz one in case I want to do some testing. I want to go ahead and go above 240 on something or whatever. Got a little bit more uh, room for saturation. Now, generally, these numbers here, which is the no load volt amperes if you vary the input voltage like this one was done at 247 volts this will go up slowly and then you'll head a knee and it'll skyrocket because you've hit the edge of the where the saturation occurs so if you plot the voltage 
you vary the input voltage, and you plot the uh, no load uh, amps times the volts, you'll get to where this, you'll head on need towards saturation. Like if you took the 60 hertz one, then you ran it at 50 hertz. Um, some of the better ones will sort of run like that. You got to really drop the voltage though. You can get to where the core loss will go way high and then burn up the transformer.